Hey guys, so today we're gonna do a video on speaker wiring, or sorry, stereo wiring. Ever since I got this car, it had an aftermarket deck in it, but whenever you hit bumps, it disconnects. And I've already had this all apart once, and I just didn't have time to fix it as I was uh, turboing the car. And what it was is they improperly installed it. So instead of soldering the wires or using butt connectors of some sorts, they just took it, twisted the wires together, and put pieces of tape over it for the whole stereo harness. So I'm gonna show you guys how to fix that and how to properly install it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull all these little screws out. Once you have this whole center console piece out, you can pull this tombstone out. The tombstone has a screw here, screw here, and I'll show you how to pop these vents out and there's a screw here and a screw here. Now originally for the center console, there will be a screw here, a screw on this side, a screw underneath here, right here, and then underneath here, there will be a couple screws. My car, since I have this in here, I don't have the screws there. When you're going to pull a stock Miata shift knob, usually you should just turn it. This one, I have a nut on the bottom, but that doesn't matter because it wasn't tight enough from the beginning. Once you have the shift knob off, you can slowly pull out the center console. For the tombstone, very simple, very easy. Usually you'll have a screw here. So for these suckers, you wanna get in behind, twist, pop. And then it pulls out. So for the screws everyone talks about on the tombstones, if you look straight up, that's where they're hidden. One there, one there. A little trick that not very many people know, if you get a very skinny flathead screwdriver or a pick and slide it in over top of the radio and then pull, it'll come out. Because what it is, if you look, if you can see in there, there's little clips that hold it and this pushes the clips up and out of the way. To pop the tombstone out, you want to pull out and over the way. You look behind, you can see that clip right there. All you do is grab it with your fingers. And pull out. So when pulling these connectors, you do not want to grab by the wires and pull. You want to push down on these little pins, or like this push tab. As you can see right here, it pushes. So you want to push on that and pull out, like so. So if you look at this rat's nest of wiring, here's a good example of what not to do. You do not want to put tape over bare wires that you just twist together. If you just twist wires together like that, that's ridiculous. It's not going to last very long. You want to do something like I did to tap in. You take heat shrink and connectors and you do it properly. And it will last way longer. This is a prime example of why you want to wire everything properly. I went to undo the tape and it wasn't even undone and the wires pulled apart. Which can cause lots of problems and if it's a power wire, that might arc out on your chassis and catch your car on fire. So the previous owner of this car decided to go a little crazy with it. And since this is a base model car where it would not have had rear speakers, it only would have had one door speaker here and one door speaker here. Instead of just upgrading the door speakers, he decided he wanted to put in the headrest speakers, which resulted in this weird wiring. So instead of doing it properly, he took the wires here for the rear, and instead of going two rear rear wires a, a ground and a positive or a power wire sorry to each speaker he decided to run thicker gauge and then right under here as you can see it runs to here it's actually connected to all these wires and run these wires with as many scotch connectors as you can imagine onto all of these wires that go behind the seats and left them as a fire hazard of just a whole bunch of metal uh, female ends waiting to be connected. So this whole harness will be coming out. So as you can see, this is the wiring mess he left behind the seat for me. We got a whole bunch of connectors tied together. 
So this is the mess he left behind the seat all exposed, which is a very bad idea. And this is only one side. So now that I got this side out, time to pull this side. So if that rat's nest doesn't scare you, I don't know what will. So I'm going to unroute this and take it right out of the car. So that's what was living in my car, not attached to anything, is all this wiring. For no reason, just plugged into speaker so it had power going to it and trying to ground itself out in the back of the car. So this is what the pin pulling tool looks like. All you do is you take it, you shove it into the connector and you can pull on the wire when this is on either side. So as you see, I have it wedged in between, in between the connector. Now you just pull on the wire. And you can hear it click. That's when you know you can pull the tool out and pull the wire. Quick tip. Use these style connectors with the heat shrink. They might be a little more expensive, but then this is actually a heat shrink, so when you heat it up with a torch or something, it closes and the wire is never exposed. Another thing is take your wires and twirl them. So you take your wire and you keep twisting it. It makes it easier to go in and it gets way better connection. So if you're ever gonna leave wires out, these were the ones that he was going to use for the rear speakers. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna cut the ends off so they're flat and there's no exposed wire so they can't touch each other and possibly cause an electrical fire. So as you can see, you just use a torch, close them right up. There's no way there's any contaminants getting in there. It's perfect, they're rock solid, they'll never come apart ever and like I'm pulling on it pretty hard and it ain't coming apart which is way better than the way it was before once you finish wiring up your uh, adapter harness you can then put all your center console stuff back on make sure you get the two bolts here the bolt here I end up replacing and then it should be sturdy make sure everything clips in properly no matter what car you have, and then you should be good. My install took a little bit longer than uh, it should for any other car, especially if you right, get the right adapter plate and everything, because the person who did it before me had broken this adapter plate, so I had to fix it, and then after fixing it, I uh, so I had to put a new screw in, then I put some putty to hold that frame where it was broken, and then since they had this deck not set in all the way, it stuck out to like here, which is quite a bit more. And what happened was you could see all the metal tabbing because they just had it rested on top here and the deck would slide in and out real janky. So what I had to do is you sometimes might have to have bend that metal tab. So I bent this bottom metal tab. I don't know if you can see it, kind of right there. Bent it so it was flat instead of like a tab. And so it slid in and then it clipped in on the side. So you push your deck in, your deck clips into the metal piece that you slide into the adapter. And then my ring here, since my uh, tombstone is what that's called on the Miatas, is fairly tight clearance, I just took it on my bench grinder, ground down the sides, ground down the top and bottom, pushed it in, clipped in, and now it's super flush, looks really good. Now you can finish up by putting the rest of your connectors in and putting in your center console. And then you should be done. Now you have your center console in. You can put your shift boot back over. Make sure it's on good. If you have an aftermarket shift lug like me, you'll have to have this nut. This nut goes on to your shifter first before your shift knob. Lots of stock stuff does the same thing, um, depending on the car. I know with the Miatas, they don't have this stock. So this is an aftermarket thing. Now once you got your shift knob and everything on, you can put the screws in your panels. And get to testing it out for the vents out of your tombstone if you just grab them like this you can see that there's these little notches in there those notches have to line up in the car so you take it and you spin them so it locks in and you just push in and they lock in place and they won't come out so do it again just real quick perfect all right so that's how you install an aftermarket steering in your car like and subscribe for more and i'll catch you in the next one